Steven Donzinger, a lawyer who won a major legal battle against Chevron on behalf of 30,000 Ecuadorian farmers and indigenous people is now being forced to serve time six months in a federal prison in New York based on a ridiculous misdemeanor charge that is 100% politically motivated. He was charged and found guilty of criminal contempt of court. But once you look at how all of the proceedings, all of the all of this trial was set up, so he fails, you'll understand what I mean when I'm talking about political persecution. And to be sure, Chevron was certainly behind this. Now, Chevron claims that it is not behind this. Chevron is not in any way going after Donzinger. That is a lie. Let me give you the details. Chevron and two federal judges have persecuted Donzinger after he won a landmark pollution case against the oil giant in Ecuadorian courts in 2013 for contaminating an area of rainforest the size of Rhode Island. Chevron refused to pay the $9.5 billion judgment and instead counterattacked in US courts. In fact, Chevron, in an effort to avoid having to pay that uh, that order, that $9.5 billion, they decided to remove all of their assets from Ecuador, bring it back to the United States, and then they went after Donzinger in what you'll see is the most disgusting, politically motivated attack imaginable. And our courts are involved. So uh, Chevron actually filed a RICO case against Donzinger in New York City. And the case was heard by US District Judge Lewis Kaplan. Don't forget that name, Lewis Kaplan. And he determined that the ruling of the Ecuadorian courts could not be enforced here in the United States because it was procured, he claimed, by fraud, bribery, and racketeering activities. Hmm. So he's accusing the lawyer in this case, Donzinger, of engaging in fraud, bribery, and racketeering activities. And as a result of that judgment, Donzinger was disbarred in 2018. The decision hinged on the testimony of an Ecuadorian judge, Alberto Guerra, who claimed that Donzinger had bribed him during the original trial and that the decision against Chevron had been ghostwritten. Wow, those are some pretty serious allegations. But then you dig in a little deeper and the details are um, you know, a little different from what the district judge here would have you believe. Uh, now, Guerra was a controversial witness. Uh, Chevron had actually prepped him on more than 50 occasions before his testimony, paid him hundreds of thousands of dollars and arranged for the judge and his family members to move to the United States with a generous monthly stipend. That was 20 times the salary he received in Ecuador. I mean, it seems like that's witness tampering to me. Seems like there's some uh, bribery going on there. Seems like maybe Chevron should be investigated for what they did here in bringing forth an Ecuadorian judge, paying him handsomely uh, to go after a lawyer who succeeded in winning a massive trial against Chevron after they had polluted the water and the environment in Ecuador. Now, in 2015, when Guerra testified in an international arbitration proceeding, he admitted, according to The Intercept, he admitted that he had lied and changed his story multiple times. According to Chevron, his inaccuracies apparently didn't change the thrust of his testimony. And guess what, Judge Kaplan, didn't think it was a problem at all. He thought that the testimony was totally valid. Given the fact that this judge who served as a witness against Donzinger admitted that he had changed his story and that he had lied. Doesn't matter, still credible. Now, I should also note that Judge Kaplan is a judge who was endorsed by the Federalist Society, a right wing organization, very well funded, very well organized, that has succeeded in getting conservative pro corporate judges appointed to various federal courts, okay? So uh, the Federalist, uh, this group, 
uh, they get some funding, they have donors and oh wow, what a shocker. One of their major donors happens to be Chevron. Conflicts of interest, I mean, who knows, maybe it's not that important. Except it's incredibly important because as you can see here, all of these connections, all of these corporate interests, all this moneyed interest had a huge impact on the outcome of Don Zinger's case and the outcome of his entire life. He's gonna serve six months in a federal prison in New York for a misdemeanor. Which by the way, that in and of itself, even if he was actually guilty of that, serving prison time for that misdemeanor is unprecedented. But let me give you more. Now, after Donzinger appealed that ruling, he was charged um, with criminal contempt. So that was when he was charged with criminal contempt. He's like, wait, 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 wait. So this judge who has conflicts of interest just found me guilty in this RICO case that was brought forward by Chevron. I'm gonna appeal it because it's wrong. And because he appealed it, the, the court found him uh, guilty of criminal contempt. No, guys, look, I get it. I get that uh, voting for awful Democrats who I can't stand myself is disheartening, it's discouraging. You feel a little dirty when you do it, but judges matter. Getting these federal society judges in our federal courts has lasting negative ramifications. And we're seeing it play out in real time with Donzinger. Let me give you more. In July of 2021, this year, District Judge Loretta Preska found him guilty of that misdemeanor charge of criminal contempt and sentenced him to six months in prison, okay? And so he appealed that and he was hoping that you know he could stay out of prison during the appeal process, but no. Beginning today, he had to report to prison. He gave his son a hug in a post that he put up on Twitter, it was heartbreaking. And he's gonna serve six months in prison for this nonsense charge, nonsense you know, accusation of criminal contempt, which again is a misdemeanor and has really like no merit. There's a, there's a clear political, this is clear political persecution. I really have no way, no other way of explaining it. Now, as he was arguing the case against Chevron in Ecuador back in 2009, the company expressly said its long-term strategy was to demonize him. And since then, Chevron has continued its all out assault on Donzinger and what's become one of the most in what's become one of the most bitter and drawn out cases in the history of environmental law. Chevron has hired private investigators to track him, created a publication to smear him, and put together a legal team of hundreds of lawyers from 60 firms who have successfully pursued an extraordinary campaign against him. It is insane. And by the way, he's been under house arrest for more than 800 days. So he's already been imprisoned in his own home for more than 800 days. And now he has to serve another six months in a federal prison for a misdemeanor charge. That is just complete and utter nonsense. Because he had the audacity to want to appeal the, uh, you know, the ruling in the RICO case. I mean, I, and so, okay, well now let's get to the criminal co uh, contempt of court. W what was that about? Why? Like what? So he was found guilty in the RICO case and it was completely politically motivated. How did he get found um, guilty of criminal contempt of court? Well, um, apparently the home confinement is his punishment for refusing a request to hand over his cell phone and computer, something that's been asked of few other attorneys. To Donzinger, who had already endured 19 days of depositions and given Chevron large portions of his case file, the request was beyond the pale. And he appealed it on grounds that it would require him to violate his commitments to his clients. Now, Donzinger, by the way, complied for the most part. But at some point, he's like, I, I've given you guys so much, what you're asking for now makes my own clients vulnerable. There's attorney client privilege, as you guys know, right? 
So he he said, I can't I can't give you what you're looking for, but he complied with everything else. Donzinger said he turned in over the devices if he lost the appeal. But even though the underlying case was civil, the federal court judge who has presided over the litigation between Chevron and Donzinger since 2011, Lewis Kaplan, drafted criminal contempt charges against him. In another legal peculiarity, in July, Kaplan appointed a private law firm to prosecute Donzinger after the Southern District of New York declined to do it. A move that is virtually unprecedented. And as Donzinger's lawyer has pointed out, the firm Kaplan chose, uh, Seward Ed Kissel, likely has ties to Chevron. Kaplan has ties to Chevron. He is a judge promoted by the Federalist Society, which is funded by Chevron. Huge conflicts of interest. Obviously, lots of political motivation behind what's happening to Donzinger. Kaplan bypassed the standard random assignment process, and he himself handpicked someone he knew well, US District Judge Loretta Preska, to oversee the case being prosecuted by the firm he chose. It was Preska who sentenced Donzinger to home detention and ordered the seizure of his passport, even though Donzinger had appeared in court on hundreds of previous occasions. So there you have it. When you have well organized, well funded conservatives focusing on every single part of our government, taking over every single part of government, we're talking about federal judges. We're talking about lifetime appointments. We're talking about pro corporate, that's that's the main point. When I say conservative, I'm not just talking about how they feel about abortion or you know gay marriage. Those issues are important. But that's not the main thing the Federalist Society is focused on. What they're focused on is ensuring that pro corporate judges sit in federal courts for the rest of our lifetimes. Look at the makeup of the Supreme Court. That wasn't an accident. That took decades of funding, coordinating and organizing by the right wing on behalf of corporate interests and now, and a lawyer's entire life has been completely destroyed because he had the courage to fight back against a massive corporation, Chevron, that engaged in drilling in Ecuador that contaminated the drinking water, that polluted the environment there. He won, he fought, he won, and now he's suffering the consequences here in his home country. Because we have a disgusting corrupt system in place. Because we have corporate judges that have all sorts of conflicts of interest and they're never held accountable for it. It's absolutely depressing. And there's nothing behind this case against Donzinger other than politically motivated actions to punish him and to send a message to other lawyers who might consider holding powerful corporations accountable for their behavior. That's what this story's about. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air, so all that, All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.